Hello, David Paul here. Um, I spotted this uh, boat um, pull up the other day on the canal, and um, I thought I'll come down here and um, take a look and uh, make a video of this one because this this boat is a real, real stunner. Um, I am not really very keen on these very long, narrow boats. People. What they do is they they buy themselves a like 60 or 70 long foot long narrow boat. The 57 foot is the one that will do all of the all of the canals. By the way, uh, go through all the locks. But they buy them that long, and then what they do is they fill them up with rubbish at one end, and often you'll even see them tipping uh, down in the water at the stern usually, and um, it's just rubbish that they don't need to have you. The, the rule that you should follow when you go onto a boat is don't buy anything for six months and then, then discover whether you really need that thing, whatever the, that thing is. But this is a really, really beautiful boat. Um, he's got steering rather rather than a tiller there. That's fine. Bit of a complication, but uh, that's his choice. But obviously, probably because he's, he's using an outboard. I like using outboats for uh, power, uh, especially on things like canal boats. The reason being is that there are no through the whole penetrations in order to receive the um, the outboard, so there's nothing in leak there. So you don't have to need to worry about a, a bearing, a cutlass bearing with a stuffing box leaking and having to pump your, your uh, bilge out and in fact you know you could actually aspire to have dry bilges in a boat like this so that's why I like them and only also the other thing is if they give you any if they give you any nonsense you can simply um, take them out throw them away and buy a new one you know much much cheaper to buy one of them second hand than to uh, then go and get a, an inboard engine and then have to fit that and all sorts so for me, it's out definitely outboards. Now what we got here, he's got a, quite a lot of uh, power on the roof there. He's got, a, I would say about 300 watts of solar power. It's unfortunate, but it's a fact of life that they do spoil the line of the boat, but uh, this guy's got a lot of, of onboard power. So I can't criticize that, but um, he could maybe have um, used narrower panels and then being able to chamfer them down uh, sort of like a v-shape to follow the roof line a bit more because this is such a stunning boat that I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to do anything to spoil it honestly the windows he's got bars on which I don't like but uh, I can see the point of why he does it um, personally I've always thought that it would be a good thing to have portholes on one side and windows on the other side and then you can have the portholes on the side that face the tooth path where people would see it and think well they couldn't break in there and then on the other side you could put your big windows so you would face away from the prying eyes of the tow path people like me <laughs> um, this bow very rounded much more rounded than normal and you know that it if you have a shorter boat it accentuates all the round bits of the shorter boat look more round you know which i like in boats i like rounded ships um nice little cockpit there the front end to sit in um yeah beautiful little boat um if i had money and this thing was for sale i'll be damn tempted to buy it but to be honest I really mustn't do things like that because um, because I have better ideas. I have bigger ideas, let's put it that way. And uh, the, the problem with this boat, as lovely as she is, um, she's confined to inland waterways. Um, I've measured her out and she is um, uh, 30 feet long. I've pierced her out, so I'm pretty confident that she's 30 foot long. Um, but the the thing about a boat of that size is you can turn it by hand you, you can actually flip it round in the canal just grab 
one, one a rope at one end and unloose on the back end, and the wind will bring it round. And you can't do that with these huge boats. You have to go to what you call a winding area, uh, uh, like a sort of reversing point that they put periodically on canals. So this thing is uh, highly desirable from that point of view. And also, it has the feature that you can, um, you're, you're able to say in London, you, you can you can always find a mooring place for these. Because remember that you've got to, um, you got to fit in with all the other boats. Now, one consequence of large boats is that they tend to create gaps between them into which you can fit other boats. It's some kind of a, uh, might do, I might do a little calculation on it one day, but it's some kind of a mathematical thing that just occurs in nature, like you call um, thingy order. I hope you don't mind, this is a beautiful boat. This is a really, really beautiful boat. What are you talking about? I'm talking about, about it. Join in. So, yeah, you do, yeah, you do. Um, she's just got it all, you know. Um, I didn't build her. You have what? I didn't build her. No. But she's recently built. Yeah. Um, she was actually made in 1988. Well, I've just been saying, you know, I've got a, a vlog like, and I, I vlog everything. And um, I've just been saying about your boat, it's basically the perfect kind of canal boat. Yes, yeah, small Everything is... about, you know what you're talking, yeah, yeah. what I'm talking you know, about. I, I'm new to this, but I wanted a smaller boat that was manoeuvrable and easy to moor. Because no, no, I you've, was new you've to done it. everything right. Yeah. Because for one thing, you've got the outboard motor. Yeah. You've got to ensure that it doesn't get stolen, take as many measures as you can on that. But like, if you get troubles with your motor, and if you get really sick of it, you just so quit and, and, and sling it, you know? I think this one here was and then put another one on. in 1988. That there motor is probably about 15 horsepower, between 20. 6 20. 20. Yeah. Good it's guess. Um, a sail drive one is about 6 uh, horsepower, um, usually for a, a yacht, you know? So you would have something like that. But to be honest, you can push this one of the one horse. Well, yeah. canal boats were pushed with one horsepower. Um, Engines, there were horses. When you hit the river, you're going to need something against the current. Yeah. Other than that, yeah. I, I, um, I'm not fond of rivers because the, the, the mooring opportunities are rubbish and yeah, the, I the, don't... the place for boats is, is a canal river, trust but, to be honest. Often to get to another canal, you have to use the rivers. Yeah. Those. How long have you been doing this? Um, I started on this boat in November, but I have a, a history of doing it for five years before. Well, the, you, you, this. This is a different section to the main canal down there, so just be aware that you can you can hokey cokey between the two if you want to stay in the same region a little bit more. You see what I mean? Sorry, explain. Sorry. Okay, so you, you're here. Yeah. You do your two weeks and then nip onto the other canal. Right. And then it's a different warden and a different business and so on. Right. You know. I'm sure they GPS class anyway. They do that. Yeah, they yeah. do that, but you, that counts as a move. You see. All right. Okay. And um, that's the only snag about this business. Yeah, I, I, I've I only think just started to do this. I've only just realised what the requirement was. Since you did it, it's uh, it's got a lot hotter, and yeah. uh, I don't different. live on a boat now. But there were, back in the day when I lived on a boat, um, I um, I stayed like for six months at a time at places, you know. Mm -hmm. So I basically lived in in Great Linford, Milton Keynes, and then I lived in Leighton Buzzard, and I lived in Tring. I lived in these places, you know, right, became so part of the community, yeah, yeah. went to the same churches as everybody else and uh, I, I, I spent six months down at um, Notting Hill and uh, Julia Roberts was living down there at the time and she, um, so she's going to the pubs or whatever you know, you're doing socially in that area and I'm doing the same thing but she's probably paying a fortune to live millions, there, I'm sure. I was paying £45 a, a month to live on a canal boat, and eventually I got a ticket saying would, would I move my boat, so I moved it. Um, they're hot now. Yeah, they're, they're much hotter now. I think you just got to comply. I, I mean, I, I've, I've been poor for the first five months, I've got to say, but then I didn't really know the rules. They don't explain it to you. you well, I, I wouldn't go back on a canal boat now. What I would do is if I was going to do it, I would purchase something like a westerly 30 foot westerly boat with uh, bilge keels take them off, unbolt them, right. put them in storage, and you've got a yacht which you've got on the canal. 
And then if you ever want to leave the canal system, you can actually put the keels back on right, and sail off, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people that have done this. You can actually um, put flotation on a, on a yacht and make a float higher in the water so those keels don't kiss the ground, you know. Mm. But on a westerly, the, the twin keel of westerlies like the Centaur and the uh, Pentland, uh, keels they well, are cast iron, so if it did kiss the ground, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt the keel, you know. You just grind to a sudden stop. Yeah. A, a boat that I used to live on is, is wandering around here. He's cut the top off and built a whole cabin system on. Nice. And uh, he, um, you know, he's done that in order to lower the boat. It's ruined the look of the boat. It was a, it was a beautiful uh, boat. Um, but you got to do what you got to do, you know. It's, it's, it's no longer as a boat that you could ever consider sending back to sea. So... I've got a yacht now, um, which uh, is in storage, and that's from the TV series Howard's Way, if you know that. No, I don't. I don't do that. Well, back in the day, the TV series Howard's Way in the 70s. I remember the name of it. Well, it was the boat that inspired the TV series. Right, okay. And she's coming out of storage, and she's going to do the Jester Challenge. So anyway, I better leave you in peace. So okay, I've, I've said everything yeah, uh, that I can possibly comment. say about this lovely boat. It is and a lovely boat. I'll tell you about Have my you channel. The and you can see the what? The duck on the front. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, I'm the, not... the name of the boat is Duckling. Yeah, well, I'm into uh, just boats as boats, you know. There's a lot of people put ornamentation and stuff on them. That's really very... It's just it's just right, you know. Yes, yes. And the colour, by the way, um, you might find that you cook a bit in the summer. Cook. and that And that is the perfect colour to this prevent is, it. This is, this so is, I would just leave it alone. This is for narrow boats. Yeah, I mean I'll, I know this from before. It's, it's unusual, but I but I would just leave it alone. No, you know? no, I'm not going to touch it. I Keep you that. cool. It's easy to paint. It looks good when it's clean. Yeah, yeah it, it just does the job. And and what I, what I would kind of do with this boat is basically nothing. <laughs> it's, it's just it's perfect as she is. Yeah. All my hot water is solar heated. It, it it it's it is a gem. They're becoming more expensive uh, boats now. Not the sea boats, that's the trick that nobody ever figures, you see. You know, can go and buy a yacht and put it on the canal. Have a no, you can you can you can take a you can do the constant cruising yeah, with can, a with a sea going yacht. I understand, but at the same time it's difficult to do that if you're working. Yeah, I uh, this works for me because I work in London, I work around London, I yeah. sort of shuffle about. Same with me, I, I I'm kind of uh, it wouldn't be a problem for me. I, I know all the spots to go to, and, right. and I, I know how to keep them happy. Exactly. You know? well, that's something I need to learn. And, uh... Uh, I'll tell you something. We are now at the time when you can check the marina over there if you want a mooring, because um, they are doing moorings this month or next month or something. Where are we march, they should be releasing moorings now, and you'll be able to get in. Anyway, I'm going to say goodbye uh, to to my channel people um, thanks a lot and Makita uh, Tayo Sakana Atilago see you later Jesus be with you see you now mate